Good afternoon, and happy St. Patrick's Day. Today, to honor St. Patrick, not only am I wearing green, but I'd like to tell you about who St. Patrick was and what his faith was like. And the best way to do so is to use his own words. So for today's devotion, I'd like to read to you portions of the Confession of St. Patrick. My name is Patrick. I am a sinner, a simple country person, and the least of all believers. I am looked down upon by many. So I turned with all my heart to the Lord my God, and he looked down on my lowliness and had mercy on my youthful ignorance. He guarded me before I knew him, and before I came to wisdom and could distinguish between good and evil. He protected me and consoled me as a father does for his son. That is why I cannot be silent about such great blessings and such a gift that the Lord so kindly bestowed. This is how we can repay such blessings. When our lives change and we come to know God, to praise and bear witness to his great wonders before every nation under heaven, to know God, to, pray, to praise and bear witness to his great wonders before every nation under heaven. This is because there is no other God, nor will there ever be, nor was there ever, except God the Father. He is the one who is not begotten, the one without a beginning, the one from whom all beginnings come, the one who holds all things in being. This is our teaching. And his Son, Jesus Christ, whom we testify has always been since before the beginning of this age, with the Father in a spiritual way. He was begotten in an indescribable way before every beginning. Everything we can see and everything beyond our sight was made through him. He became a human being and, having overcome death, was welcomed to the heavens to the Father. The Father gave him all power over every being, both heavenly and earthly and beneath the earth, let every tongue confess that Jesus Christ, in whom we believe and whom we await to come back to us in the near future, is Lord and God. He is judge of the living and of the dead. He rewards every person according to their deeds. He has generously poured on us the Holy Spirit, the gift and promise of immortality, who makes believers and those who listen to be children of God and co-heirs with Christ. This is the one we acknowledge and adore, one God in the trinity of the sacred name. Although I am imperfect in many ways, I want my brothers and relations to know what I'm really like so that they can see what it is that inspires my life. So I am, first of all, a simple country person, a refugee and unlearned. I do not know how to provide for the future, but this I know for certain, that before I was brought low, I was like a stone lying deep in the mud. Then he who is powerful came and in his mercy pulled me out and lifted me up and placed me on the very top of the wall. That is why I must shout aloud in return to the Lord for such great deeds of his, here and now and forever, which the human mind cannot measure. It's a long story to tell each and every deed of mine, or even parts of it. I'll make it short, as I tell of how the good God often freed me from slavery and from 12 dangers which threaten my life, as well as from hidden dangers and from things which I have no words to express. From where did this wisdom come to me? A wisdom which was not in me. I didn't even know how the number of days, how much less did I know God? Where did such a great and life-giving gift come from then, to know and love God? If I be worthy, I am ready even to give up my life most willingly here and now for his name. It is there that I wish to spend my life until I die, if the Lord should grant it to me. I am greatly in debt to God. He gave me such great grace that through me many people should be born again in God and brought to full life. 
Those who wish may laugh and insult, but I will not be silent, nor will I hide the signs and wonders which the Lord has shown me even many years before they came about. He knows all things, even before the beginning of time. So I want to give thanks to God without ceasing. He frequently forgave my lack of wisdom and my negligence, and more than once did not become very angry with me, the one who is meant to be his helper. I was not quick to accept what he showed me, and so the Spirit prompted me. The Lord was merciful to me a thousand, thousand times because he saw in me that I was ready but that I did not know what I should do about the state of my life. I see that already in this present age, the Lord has given me a greatness more than could be expected. I was not worthy of this, not the kind of person the Lord would do this for, since I know for certain that poverty and calamity are more my style than riches and enjoyment. But Christ the Lord became poor for us, I, too, am wretched and unhappy. Even if I were to wish for riches, I do not have them. I'm not trying to judge myself, since every day there's the chance that I will be killed or surrounded or be taken into slavery or some other such happening. But I fear none of these things because of the promises of heaven. I have cast myself into the hands of the Almighty, who is the ruler of all places. So I shall make a return to him for all that he has given to me. But what can I say? Or what can I promise to my Lord? There is nothing I have that is not his gift to me. But he knows the depth of my heart, my very gut feelings. Would you pray with me? Lord God, we thank you for the testimony and the witness of St. Patrick. And on this is feast day. We pray that not only will we wear green and all pretend to be Irish, but I pray that his words of testimony about his life and about his faith in you may rest deeply in our hearts and guide us in our own journey toward your glory. Amen. Thanks for joining me. We'll talk again.